Well, these are very aggressive and very violent mm. actions mm. which do not fall mm. at all within diplomatic or within political relations at all. Mm. These are uh, aggressive measures which are, are, are considered uh, criminal measures because they uh, based on unexistent criteria, legal criteria, the government of the United States have seized, they have taken our property, Venezuelan property. Seedgo Petroleum Company is a Venezuelan based, uh, sorry, a Venezuelan capital company. Uh, a group of refineries in the United States also 6,000 petrol stations around the United States. They have seized all that which is valued at about $20,000 million. And they are not uh, allowing the payment for our oil, they are not allowing it to come to Venezuela. They are also seizing, uh, with the sanctions, uh, government and state accounts around the world and they are taking these dollars. That's why we have changed most of the um, accounts, public accounts to uh, euro accounts and it is not acceptable because what they are trying to do is in order to cripple the government of Venezuela and the Venezuelan economy and blame the government for that and use that pretext to tell the world that because of a failed economy which of course is not is a result of their attacks, aggressions, sabotage and sanctions because of that then people should um, reject President Maduro and that is the only excuse they are using internationally but they are using with a big bombardment of lies of news as if really there existed an international legal criteria to say that the United States can decide who is the president in Venezuela and they then uh, train, pay, finance all these uh, uh, violent and uh, terrorizing gangs from opposition, violent opposition parties in Venezuela and they train one of them and suddenly they say he is going to be the next president of Venezuela and they claim he's the president and they give him the instructions and then President Mike Pence in a video which I showed to you and to all the journalists uh, comes and project a warning to Venezuela. I'm Mike Pence, the Vice President of the United States. And on behalf of President Donald Trump and all the American people, let me express the unwavering support of the United States as you, the people of Venezuela, raise your voices in a call for freedom. Nicolas Maduro is a dictator with no legitimate claim to power. So this is a whole completed a uh, specialized operation of psychological warfare, of uh, human warfare, because they are creating a situation which they call humanitarian crisis. They are not letting people in Venezuela uh, get their normal uh, food items and medicines and so on, and they blame that on President Maduro. But it is obviously the government of the United States. Fortunately, the people of Venezuela know in a great majority who their enemy is, and they are resisting the aggressions by the United States. The coup against Venezuela, the violent coup they wanted to present by uh, the creation of this double presidents of this parallel government supported by the United States and used around the globe uh, with the spreading of the news by international news agencies like Reuters, AP, AFP, uh, CNN and so on is so that people in Venezuela stop 
they become demoralized, demobilized, and they do not defend their constitution. But people in Venezuela are strongly, vibrantly supporting constitution and the right of Venezuelans to peace, the right of Venezuelans to desire for ourselves uh, our economic and our political future, and we will not accept. Uh, surveys show that 89% of people in Venezuela do not want intervention, do not want violence, do not want any kind of external intervention. Only a, a small percentage of Miami goers and Disneyland people, if they have their right, but if they want their president to come, they have to do politics, not terrorism. They have to go and use politics like President Chavez and President Maduro have done. So this is the result of a government outside Venezuela wanting to change government, to change, as they call it, regime change, because Venezuela is the largest reserve of oil. So this is a war for oil. They are making millions of families in Venezuela suffer because they want to secure the oil source for them. And they are violating all the rights of millions of Venezuelans and they are violating international rights. That is not acceptable. Do we or do we not live in a civilized world? Venezuela is on top of the region in Human Development Index. Even five years after this economic war against the population of Venezuela started in order to blame President Maduro and come to this situation which they had planned in Washington, in the government there, against Venezuela, to bring down the government of President Maduro, uh, the people of Venezuela are there having a, a perfect life. There have been a lot of psychological warfare, there have been a lot of attacks, and people last year, a lot of people in Venezuela, fled because last year there was a commotion since 2017 when for four months uh, violent opposition in Venezuela financed by North American agencies created terror on the streets of Caracas because they wanted to have another Ukraine and tell the world that Venezuela, they wanted to create a civil war and that was the excuse to bring in an international uh, intervention. But the intelligent government of President Maduro has always avoided any type of confrontation. President Maduro wants and has shown the path, like President Chavez, towards the reinforcement of peaceful methods at all times. And that's what he has done. So people in Venezuela are coping with efforts uh, to keep a normal life. But as they try to stop the attacks and the sabotage, because remember, in Venezuela, the violent opposition and the financing of international agencies from north are burning food deposits, are burning hospitals, are burning public transportation. That happens every week. This is terrorism. Why doesn't international, why don't international news agencies like Reuters present those facts? Every week they burn public units of transportation. Every week they burn uh, power stations and they sabotage uh, petroleum company installations. Why don't they show that? Uh, because there is terrorism applied against the state and the people of Venezuela. And these are, this is not done by families of the opposition. No, 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 no. Opposition in Venezuela, more than in any other country in the region, has the right to do, and they express their views every day in the more than 95% of the media, which are privately owned in Venezuela, and most of them are, the great majority of them are against the government. Mm. And in Venezuela, anybody can say anything against the government. So freedom of expression and freedom of the press exists vibrantly in Venezuela. It is a complete pack of lies.
you can see that simply by getting into any uh, live signal on internet in any television Venezuelan channel every day. It's a big lie against the Venezuelan uh, population, uh, all these lies about dictatorship. Dictatorship comes from the North. That is where the dictatorship, they dictate to the world through threats, warnings, and blackmailing that they should uh, support illegal actions in Venezuela. That's not going to happen. People in Venezuela are defending the right to peace, and President Maduro is leading the efforts of millions of families in Venezuela to keep peace and to keep violence away. It is not true that the uh, opposition in Venezuela uh, has the support of people who want violence in Venezuela. It's not true. 89% of people in Venezuela do not want any violence. In 2017, these violent opposition parties, which are now being led by this Washington puppet who was trained by Washington in the last 10 years to do this, already the, all the information is coming out now about where he started, where he went, who paid for his studies, how long he was in the United States being trained, how long he was in Serbia, and all the connections with Otport. That all is being is bring is coming out and soon we will have all that information around um our families are having a bad time in venezuela and people are getting actually more and more um conscious about who wants to destroy the venezuelan democracy and that's why they are supporting more and more together with the national armed forces that are behind President Maduro, and even though they are being trying to, the uh, uh, opposition violent parties and from the north, they are using a lot of financing to try to bribe generals. And they are all there uh, supporting President Maduro with millions of families that are not being shown on international newspapers, on international TV, because the international news agencies, which are the ones that sell the information to all the media around the world, do not publish this information. Let's remember that uh, newspapers and television stations and so on, they pay international news agencies to bring them information. And so there are three, four, five, six main news agencies which have their correspondence everywhere and they mainly belong to the United States, United Kingdom and France um, and they are the ones that distribute uh, information around the world. You take any newspapers in any country of the world and you will see that every day they simply bring uh, the same news from Reuters, the same news from AP, the same news pieces and articles from AFP, from the uh, Economist, and so on. That is not democracy. That is not journalism. That is not news. That is a complex system of opinion making and opinion manipulation to create uh, a political state for whatever the big uh, um, uh, military and political powers in the world want to do with the world. And the main thing here is to appropriate the sources of wealth. Oil, gold. Wherever there is oil, wherever there is gold, there will always be war. And that war, those wars are created by these big powers. There's no democracy about this. There's no democracy or freedom being defended. Those who defend democracy and freedom are defending President Maduro and the millions of families in Venezuela who understand about the Constitution. In Venezuela, internet is free in most public places because President Maduro understood that 
one way of stopping uh, uh, mind manipulation is increasing the sources of information for people. That's why people have been able to understand who attacks Venezuela, who attacks the economy of Venezuela, who destroys democracy in Venezuela, and who they have to defend. Um, and we thank many people around the world who are with Venezuela, showing support and solidarity against international, uh, external intervention and military operations against Venezuela. I think Venezuelan population in Venezuela are showing and are giving a lesson of peace, of uh, conscience, of knowledge, of resistance, of democratic values, of uh, international peace and cooperation. That is what Venezuela today entails in the defense of the constitution, in the defense of the presidency and the state in Venezuela. Thank you. Thank you very much. much.